it's Ethel Dude here and today I want to show you how to set up and use Adobe Acrobat PDF Reader. Whether you're a teacher, a student or a business person, you're going to want to edit a document effectively and be in control of what you print. So first I'm going to show you how to best set up your PDF Reader so you can access all the tools you need quickly. Then I'm going to show you the best tools to use whether you're teaching online or editing a document at home in preparation for later use. Finally, I'm going to show you how to print effectively so that you don't waste ink on needless images and background colors. So the first thing we need to do is we need to download the Acrobat Reader and don't click on this Microsoft McAfee install, you don't need it. Just click on the free download I will put the links in the description below and simply open this up and install the Acrobat Reader. Now, one reason why I ask my students to have at least an Acrobat Reader is that from time to time I edit documents and make them more interactive. If you look at this one, you can move the objects, breakfast, elevens is over here, and I can get them to do uh, an action either on, on an interactive board or we can do it on Zoom Live. Another thing I have is audios. Sometimes I embed audios and I'll show you and put a link below to my YouTube video where I show you how to add audios using Foxit Reader, the free version, by the way. And if you click on it, it says, uh, trust, do you trust this? Now remember, it was made by Foxit Reader, but it will play on Adobe Reader. Then I click it again. And there you can see it's playing the audio. And what I want you to take note of is that if we open this document in the edge, it will not do those things. So let's right click open with Microsoft Edge. And you'll see that if I click on these icons, nope, they, they can't do anything. They don't do anything. The same with the other document where I try to move objects. If I open this one, I can't move these words. They're immovable. So that's why I always ask people to have a PDF reader, at least Adobe Acrobat free reader. So let's look at this document. And I just want to use this document as my example for now. So you've opened up Adobe Reader. This is what you get. It looks nice. This is the very new version. Now I'm going to show you a comparison with the version I prefer, which is the older version. And to get that, you have to click on menu and go disable new Acrobat reader. And when you do that, you'll end up with a reader that looks like this. So here you can see that all the tools I need are in the top two bars. Whereas on this new version, you kind of have to click in here and go pan, or if you want to add a text document or a pen tool, all of those tools I have here. The same with if you want to make it a two page view like this, you can see here, and you can enable scrolling or you can zoom to fit or zoom the height. It's up to you. All of those tools I have at the top here. So I can do double page view, scrolling view, single page view. All of that I have directly at my fingertips as I do the pens and the arrows here. I have the pen tool available all as and when I like. Now, some of you will still prefer this more modern new version, and that's fine. And I'm going to try to show you the four most important tools I use in both of these areas. Now, before we do anything, I want you to make note of the fact that when you open these 
you notice there's a pop-up where they're trying to sell you the seven day trial. And the same goes for this version. If we close this one out and I open it again, watch what happens. This toolbox on the left hand side, like the toolbox for the other one here on is on the right hand side, are advertising the seven day trial. To get rid of that, you have to go to the menu here and go to preferences and click document and remember current state of tools pane. Click that, go OK. And then when we close out again, if we open, the tool panes are there. I close that tool pane. I don't need to see it ever again. Close the document, open again. And you can see the tools pane has gone. Now here, if I want to stop this opening at the right hand side, I have to go to edit, preferences, and again, general, uh, oh, documents, and say, remember, open. And there you have it. See, it didn't open that side panel. However, you may notice my tools at the top have gone. So in order to get them back, you have to click on comment here. And make sure you click this arrow to make it go away again. And you'll see all the comments are at the top. And we're going to edit the document at the same time. So my four favorite tools are obviously the pen. If you want to write on something or point to something, I use the pen. And if you have especially one of those document pens that you can write, like the Wacom pen tools and you can draw, they're useful for online. Here, I would just simply draw on the document here. So here I click on here again, draw, and I can draw the arrows where I like or just circle something. My other favorite tool is this um, highlighter, obviously. People need to highlight things and you can find that here highlighter. There we go. And you can change the color, obviously, of the highlighter as you wish. Now, the third tool I use is the text tool. Now, the reason I'm using this version is I can't find this text tool anywhere in this document. I'll show you what I mean here. You might think if you look around, there's no capital T for text. The closest you get is this type text, but that's connected with the signature bars. Here, you can click and type, you can delete it, you can make it bigger, highlight it, and make it bigger, and you can make it a different color by clicking here, you can make it orange. However, you cannot choose any other colors. That's a thing you can do here with the text. Now, this is the signature bar here. And if you click this, you have this text tool as well. But what I like about this version, the older version, which is best, is that all the ticks and all the X's are available directly. Whereas here, you have to kind of go over here, click on the two, click the X, click it there, go back, click the tick, go back. And you have to constantly do that. Whereas here, they're all there for you. So I'm going to close off this, go back to my comments pane, and show you a text tool that this doesn't have. Now in this document, when I use the text tool, remember in order to open the text tool, I had to click on the comments bank and that would open it. And then I had to close it. But I have the text tool here. And when I type, you can see I have a colored box. So I can click and not only do I have the colors that the other one had, I have more shades of gray. I even have what's called other color. So I can go here and this is a color 
I preferred. It's a special kind of red. I can move this box around here. Look, I can have this kind of purple, this kind of red. I can eat and change to try and get this kind of blue. If I'm if I'm good enough. Look at that. That's almost that kind of blue. Move it around. And I can add it to the spectrum and say, you know what? OK. So now it's turned to a similar kind of blue. If you want it exact, then what you have to do is you can use a thing called Microsoft Toys where you get a kind of tool. I'll see if I can find it here. You get a kind of tool and you can actually, if I just remove my highlighter, you can see I can, I can click around with this toy and I get the exact blue there. And if I click, it gives me the RGB number and I can feed that into here and just simply add the RGB number, which is 19, 140, and the other number is 181. There it is, add it to custom color and click OK. And there you have it. That color is exactly the same as that color. So that's why I prefer this kind of text tool. But you may prefer this one here with the ticking box where you can just, you know, you'll get one type of blue, that's all. You get this one and you just have to live with it. And that's fine. Now the final tool I like to use is this box here. And why? Because sometimes you don't want to print everything. Remember I said I was going to show you how to be in control of your printing. If I want to print this document, I don't want to print all this blue. I don't need this. What you can do is, well, there's a couple of things you can do. Notice here I've got this kind of, um, it's called stamp thing. What I can do is I can take this icon, this camera icon, and I'll show you how to set this top bar up. If you right click here, you can add and subtract any of the items that you see here. And you that's how you dress up the page. And I added this camera tool, which I think was here. So what I did is use the camera tool, take a little picture of this, and then go paste. Now it will paste it quite large, so you have to make it smaller. But what I can do now, I can move it here and make it whatever size I want. I'll leave it there because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'll make this a bit bigger. And you can do this on the other one as well. I'm going to hide these blues I don't want. So you get this text box. And there's one, but I would like another one. If I click away, get another one, uh, and there's two. And that way, I don't print that horrible blue. You might say, but it's got this red box around the edge. Can we get rid of that? Yes, we can. What we do is go to the hand tool, just click there, and right click on this box, go to properties and then click style, no border. And what I'm going to do is click make it default properties. So every box I do from now on will have no border. And there it is. And I'll actually get rid of this one and show you that there was no border anymore. There you go. Get rid of that. Click on another one. There you go. And look at that, I've saved myself from making a lot of blue areas. I'm just going to make a small triangle there. And with the hand tool, or this icon here, I'm going to move it above his head. And that way, now if I print this, if you go to print, edit, uh, print, you will not print this. Let's do it on the other document. Let me show you how I did it, do it here. Same again, go to here, click add text document, add the text document, 
and once you've added the text, normally you can add a text, but we don't want to add a text. And another thing we can do is once we click away and we click on the box again, we can click this pin. This pin means you will be able to make as many boxes as you like. And you can write text in them if you wish. So we can do this and this and another box. Remember, I want to make it there. I'm going back to my hand tool. But one thing I forgot was to make it default properties, wasn't I? So let me just get rid of all of these. And remember, we right click, go to properties and make it no border and make it default properties. So now I'll stick that in the corner. If it's still showing blue, just drag it up. I'm going to go to my text comment and make a little box there and a box there and another box there, which I will then use the hand tool to move above his head. And you can stretch it. So now what happens, let me move this a bit further out. We still want to see some of the text. So now, if I wanted to print this for students, simply go to the print icon. Where is it here? Now notice the only print icon available I've got to make a PDF is from Microsoft Print. You may have different ones, but go to Microsoft Print. And as you can see, I can print and I don't have to print the blue. If you click down here and you just say, I just want to print the document, you will get everything. And let's print with markups. Another thing you can do is, what if I wanted this to be bigger? Well, here's what you can do. You can zoom in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this smaller like this. And we're going to print view. So here's my view. That's all I want. I want it like that on a page. Click the printing box. So you have to get it the way you want it. And here we click more options and we want current view. So the current view is just that document, but it's still small. I want it bigger. So click fit. Ta-da. And look at that. It fits exactly to the page. I've got a large document. I can print it to PDF. Watch what happens. Let's just do that. Print it. Obviously, you could print it to paper as well. So I'm just going to call it AAA. It's on the desktop. And there it is. If I double click it. make it bigger. There's my document. And uh, okay, it's a bit blurred, but still, it's nice. I've not had to print it otherwise. Yeah, it's quite clear if I printed that. Okay, so there you have it. Just to summarize, you can either have the old view, as you see here in the middle, or the new view. And remember, the most important tools are the pen, this text box machine, writing text machine, and the highlighter. Not forgetting the signature that you can add, and it's a lot more easier on this uh, version. However, you might like the newer version, and that's fine. Watch out for my next video, which is about Foxit Reader, where I showed you last time how I added the audio. Have a look at the links below and the videos that are about to be on the end screen. And I'll see you on the next video.